Thank you very much, Mr. President. I rise to express my opposition to the nomination of Judge Michael Mukasey to be our next Attorney General. I thank Chairman Leahy and his committee, including Senator Specter and members I see here, uh, Senator Kennedy. I thank the committee for working hard to examine the nominee's record and, frankly, for asking the tough questions, which really, I think, gave us a real look into the mind and the heart of this man. I have respect for Judge McCasey's background, his dedication to public service, his reputation as a distinguished jurist and a, and a good man. But when evaluating our nation's chief law enforcement official, we must weigh far more than background and likability, particularly now, particularly now when we are following the disastrous tenure of Alberto Gonzalez, particularly now when we have lost so much moral leadership in the world, Mr. President, because of what is happening in Iraq and, unfortunately, what has happened in Abu Ghraib, we need to look past likability and qualifications. We must firmly believe that our next Attorney General must always put his loyalty to the Constitution above his loyalty to the President. We have a President and a Vice President who have dangerously abused their executive power and who have undermined the public trust. Mr. President, this isn't a partisan opinion. Listen to what John Dean, White House Counsel to President Richard Nixon, wrote. Quote, not since Nixon left the White House have we had such greed over presidential power, and never before have we had such political paranoia. History never exactly repeats itself, he writes, but it does some rather good imitations. Close quote. Mr. President, when an administration spies on its own citizens without a warrant, strips habeas corpus rights from those held by America, and fires its own U.S. attorneys for political reasons, that, Mr. President, is a shocking abuse of executive power. When an administration thinks it can just ignore the entire co-equal branch of government, even using signing statements to reinterpret or disregard more than 750 laws that Congress has passed, that is a shocking abuse of executive power. When an administration silences its own officials, rewriting testimony, redacting testimony, shelving reports, refusing to let experts publicly speak the truth, that, Mr. President, is a shocking abuse of executive power. I have seen this so many times with this administration. The latest time was with global warming experts whose truths the White House find inconvenient. And what did they do? They redacted testimony of the CDC director, the Center for Disease Control, when we asked her to come before the Environment Committee of the United States Senate and tell us what would the health effects of unfettered global warming be? What would happen? The White House muzzled her by slashing her testimony. They gave all kinds of excuses as to why it was done. None of them were real. And then, when I wrote to the President, and I said, Mr. President, we need to hear, we need to hear what Dr. Gerberding has to say about the impacts of global warming on the health of our people. Mr. Fielding, White House counsel, writes back, oh, gee, we're not going to send you her original testimony that you've asked for. Oh, no. That would be abuse of executive privilege. And let me restate that. That would be an abuse of the separation of powers, and he asserted executive privilege. Imagine asserting executive privilege for something like the health effects of global warming. It's unbelievable. 
So now we need an attorney general who's going to be the people's lawyer, not the president's lawyer, not the one who's going to tell us, oh, you're, yeah, we just can't do anything about it, Congress. We need an attorney general who is going to check this unprecedented abuse of executive power, not rubber stamp it. Unfortunately, because of the deep and thorough questioning of the Judiciary Committee and my reading of that, I cannot support Judge Mukasey. Judge Mukasey ruled that President Bush had the authority to detain American citizens as enemy combatants without criminal charges or habeas corpus rights. And likewise, during his confirmation hearing, Judge Mukasey failed to demonstrate that he would independently evaluate this president's broad assertion of executive privilege. When asked if he would permit the U.S. attorney to execute congressional contempt citations when the White House refuses to provide documents to Congress, Judge Mukasey didn't say yes. He should have said yes. The statute is clear. The statute is clear that when Congress issues a contempt citation, the U.S. Attorney is required to bring the matter to a grand jury. What Judge Mukasey said was that, gee, he'd have to look at it. He'd have to see if it really was reasonable. And the fact is, that's not what the statute says. There's no reasonable test. When the Congress issues a contempt citation, the U.S. attorney is required to bring the matter to a grand jury. If the president says executive privilege, it doesn't matter. But the judge said he'd look at it and see if the president was being reasonable. So we have to send a clear and unequivocal message to the Justice Department staff. We have to send a clear message to the American people and to the world that the United States honors and respects and will never turn away from our Constitution. You know, it, it's so amazing to me. We have a crisis in Pakistan. We're a dictator, unfortunately is what I'm saying, General Musharraf is behaving like, has suspended the Constitution. And everyone here, all of us, feel terrible about this, including the President of the United States, who, as I understand it, talked to him on the phone and told him to restore the Constitution. Well, here, we can't get papers from this White House. Now, I'm not comparing that in any way, shape, or form to the kind of suspension of the Constitution we see abroad. But I am saying in this country, in this country, everyone assumes the Constitution will be followed. And that's why we need an Attorney General now in 2007 who is going to be so strong on the point. Yes, he should have said, if Congress issues a contempt citation, of course, we will do what we have to do under the law. So it's not enough to hope that the nominee will exercise independent judgment and stand up to this president and vice president. We must know from the record before us that this nominee will uphold the Constitution of, and our law, laws and do it clearly and unequivocally. Now, that's a high standard. I admit that. But that's what the people of this great nation deserve, nothing less. Unfortunately, Judge Mukasey's response to questions about torture don't meet the standard. During his confirmation hearing, the nominee was asked whether waterboarding is illegal. Now, I know a lot of people have discussed this, and perhaps we're all being repetitious. But I think we need to say how we feel. This is a moment for this Senate. This has been a long day for all of us. I know for me it's been a big day. 
I helped to lead, along with Senator Inhofe, an override of a very important bill. I had a hearing on global warming. I had a briefing on global warming. I've been at it just as we all have. But I came out to the floor because I think this is an important moment where members have to be heard. We must know from the record before us that the nominee will uphold the Constitution and our laws. And yes, it is a high standard that the people deserve. So when the nominee was asked whether waterboarding is illegal, he responded that if waterboarding is torture, then in fact it's unconstitutional. So I have to ask this rhetorical question. If waterboarding is torture, if we are talking about a brutal interrogation technique that simulates drowning. Not surprisingly, members of the Judiciary Committee were not satisfied with this answer. And I praise them. They probed. They questioned. They asked again, is waterboarding illegal? This time, the judge responded with a four-page letter that once again failed to answer. He called the question hypothetical. He said that his legal opinion would depend on the actual facts and circumstances. Depend on the actual facts and circumstances? If waterboarding is torture, is this the message we want to send to the world? That our evaluation of a brutal tactic depends on facts and circumstances? In fact, Judge Mukasey's answer was a bit too similar to a statement by Alberto Gonzalez that the legality of torture techniques, quote, would depend on the circumstances, unquote. This is not a clear answer. This is not unequivocal. And it is not what we need in an attorney general now. In 2007, when the world is turning away from America as a moral leader. Teddy Roosevelt didn't have to consider the facts and circumstances in 1902 when he court-martialed and removed an American general in the Philippines for allowing his troops to engage in waterboarding. 1902, the last century, the turn of the last century. And we have someone equivocating on this point? President Roosevelt said then, nothing can justify the use of torture or inhumane conduct by our military. Senators McCain, Warner, and Graham didn't have to consider, quote, the facts and circumstances when they wrote to Judge Mukasey, waterboarding under any circumstances represents a clear violation of U.S. law, they wrote. Waterboarding today, Mr. President, is not a hypothetical. It is used in Burma against supporters of democracy. Waterboarding is an unconstitutional form of cruel and inhumane treatment. It is illegal under U.S. laws from the Torture Act, which prohibits acts specifically intended to inflict severe physical or mental pain or suffering, to the Detainee Treatment Act, which prohibits cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment. It is illegal under international laws, such as the Geneva Conventions, which are not quaint, Mr. President. Those conventions prohibit cruel, humiliating, and degrading treatment. Following World War II, the U.S. convicted several Japanese soldiers for waterboarding American and allied POWs. Let me repeat it. Following World War II, the U.S. convicted several Japanese soldiers for waterboarding American and allied POWs. What kind of statement are we hearing from Judge Mukasey? Our law and our history are crystal clear. So why can't Judge Mukasey state in unequivocal terms that waterboarding is torture and that it is illegal? I would ask for one additional minute and I'll sum up. Mr. President, our country is at a critical point in its history. This president and vice president have shown reckless disregard for the rule of law and the institutions sworn to uphold it. Now more than ever before, we need an attorney general who can exercise independent judgment and who will exercise independent judgment. We need an attorney general who shows every day, by word and by deed, that the U.S. is still the world's standard bearer for the rule of law. 
We need an attorney general who will truly turn the page and write a new chapter for the Justice Department and for our country. Now, Mr. President, it is very rare that I vote no on these kinds of nominations. I do it now and then. But I have to say regretfully tonight that I've concluded that Judge Mukasey does not meet the critical standard. And at this time, I feel very strongly that he should not be confirmed. And I yield the floor.